Well, it is very perplexing. It is very disconcerting. I spent two and a half years in Afghanistan as a civilian military advisor to the Afghan army. I was based out of Kandahar, and I covered southern Afghanistan. When you deploy our men and women to the very complex battlefield today of Islamic jihadists, this is an enemy that does not wear uh, a uniform. This is an enemy that blends in with the civilian uh, sector. And we depend and rely upon human intelligence and a lot of our uh, analysis of trends to be able to find these individuals that are out there supporting the Taliban and such people as bomb makers and what have you. And when you look at the fact that this is something that happened in 2010, and Major Goldstein has already been brought up under one previous investigation. And based upon that previous investigation, they found that in an Article 32 hearing, which is like a grand jury for the military, there was not enough evidence to go forward with any type of court martial or any charge against him. But what the Army did do, they stripped him of his Special Forces tab, basically telling this Green Beret that you are no longer a Green Beret, and they also revoked his Silver Star. Now, based upon a Fox News interview, the Army is going back and reopening an investigation that they already determined there was not enough evidence to charge him with, and they're saying now they're going to charge him with premeditated murder. And as I have said before, charging our men and women in a combat zone with premeditated murder is like issuing out speeding tickets at Daytona 500. This is insidious, and what really should get the American people in an uproar is that there's a person by the name of Bo Bergdahl. Bo Bergdahl is a deserter. He, was, he pled guilty to that charge. Bo Bergdahl caused American soldiers to lose their lives in rescue attempts trying to find him. Right. Bo Bergdahl, based on UCMJ, should be in prison and should be facing the death penalty because of what he did. But instead, he's free, and now Major Goldstein is being charged. You know, Colonel, I, I report on many, many stories every day. This one has, and I try not to get personally angry. This one has me personally angry. Talk to us a little about the UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice, and, and what provisions under that code would even allow Major Goldstein to be charged, let alone warranting it. I think this is ludicrous, as you say, insidious, but what provisions under the UCMJ would even allow these charges? Well, this is one of those things where you have uh, overzealous uh, Judge Advocate General JAG officers in the United States Army, especially it seems, that are, you know, once again trying to jump up a charge for whatever reason. This is a Taliban bomb maker. You know, we send these young men and women into these combat zones to fight against a very vicious and determined enemy, like I said, that does not wear uniforms. And when you start to try to put law enforcement type of uh, policies in a combat zone, such as catch and release, which is exactly the uh, type of rules of engagement, that uh, Major Goldstein was operating under or telling our men and women in combat they cannot fire on the enemy until they're fired upon or they see a hostile intent. A bomb maker is a person that is an enemy combatant. He's an unlawful enemy combatant, and they're not rightfully protected in the Geneva Convention because they are blending in with civilian society. And the important thing in combat zones like Afghanistan, when we get these tips, when we get these leads, we have to take action. We have to get these people off the battlefield. And it is not like what we saw happen in Guantanamo Bay, where we were releasing these individuals, and the recidivism rate was 30 to 33 percent. So the Uniform Code of Military Justice is there to make sure that our men and women operate within the, uh, the law of land warfare, which these people that are out there not in uniforms are already violating the law of land warfare. Major Goldstein should not be going through a second investigation. Bo Bergdahl should be the one in prison. Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Colonel. What does this do? Now, you operated in that theater for many years. You operated there both uh, in uniform and as a civilian advisor. Doesn't this embolden the enemy? I mean, I know we look at the Taliban and we look at ISIS and we think these are very backwards people, but they're pretty sophisticated with technology. They're watching American news. They're on the Internet. They know exactly what's happening here. Isn't this emboldening the bad guys when we, when we try to prosecute American heroes for taking out our enemies? Well, uh, speaking of someone that has a little bit of a personal experience with that, absolutely it does. It does embolden our enemy, but it also uh, it, it hurts the, the fervor and the desire of our men and women that are already in these combat zones. They're out there fighting very hard to protect our liberties and our freedoms and trying to defeat this very vicious enemy, a vile enemy, on the battlefield. Because what it says is that you have people in uniform, our JAG officers, that are more so concerned about playing by these insidious rules that 
I guess they they are the only ones to benefit from. I'll give you another case in point. Army First Lieutenant Clint Lawrence was a combat platoon leader in southern Afghanistan, in Kandahar province. He is sitting in jail right now because he ordered the engagement of the enemy that was making a high-speed uh, charge toward his uh, platoon position. Now, the insidious thing, again, about this is that the Army JAG officers withheld exculpatory evidence that would have exonerated First Lieutenant Clint Lawrence, who sits now in Fort Leavenworth Prison with a 20-year sentence. This is not how we reward the men and women that we send in the harm's way. But for whatever reason, we are having lawyers that are taking over the battlefield and not warriors. Well, we also saw this with uh, Jason Bresler, the Marine officer who was here stateside, yes. and he was in a class. He, uh, Disclosure, a good friend of mine was one of his attorneys, and mm -hmm. uh, he warned his, his fellow Marines about green on blue attacks, a certain Afghan, I believe it was a general or police commander who was corrupt. It's police commander. Uh, it yeah. was a police commander, right? And uh, ultimately, because he was admonished and punished, Marines died at the hands of this guy. The government has been trying to prosecute Bresler for years. I mean, this is so foreign to me. I wish I, we should highlight, we need to highlight every one of these stories, don't we, Colonel? Americans need no, to know this is happening. No, we absolutely should. And let us never forget about Bradley Manning, who yes. divulged hundreds of thousands of pieces of classified information in the combat zone in Iraq. Once again, that is a punishable by death uh, crime under the Uni Uniform Code of Military Justice, is being is traitorous activity. But now uh, Manning is walking freely all because he decided that he would prefer to be a, a woman than a man. And for whatever reason, his sentence was uh, cut short. And he even ran for Senate in, in yeah. Maryland. So you have Manning, you have Bo Birdall, you have these individuals that for whatever reason, they are getting leniency for violating uh, the code of conduct and the standards of honor of our men and women that we send into these combat zones. But yet we want to send someone like a Major Goslin, uh, Gos Goldstein to, uh, to prison, or like you say, Major Jason Bresler, who did everything he could to protect Marines. Sadly, two Marines lost their lives yeah. when they were gunned down in a gym on their forward operating base. Yeah, Colonel, the, these stories make my blood boil. All right, we only have about 45 seconds left. General Michael Flynn this morning, the judge delayed his sentencing again because he's cooperating with the special counsel. Real quick, Colonel, what's your opinion of this Flynn case? Well, I think the more that we learn about the Mueller investigation and how it seems that they entrapped General Flynn and how interesting it is that it is now the discredited FBI agent Peter Strzok who did the interview with General Flynn. You know, again, here's a man who served this country honorably. And he's been driven into bankruptcy. Why? Because of the insidious tax of the progressive socialist left and it seems the Mueller deep state. Colonel Allen West. Colonel, really a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thanks for joining us. My honor. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, too, Colonel. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more breaking news coverage, exclusive interviews, and great videos, click over here to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And don't forget to download the free Newsmax TV app. Newsmax TV. It's real news for real people.